I am CC Chambers and this is Digital Download. Welcome to episode 8. We are talking about a few movies today. Now some will sink and some will swim. The first one to come up is another Walt Disney Pixar movie. Yeah, Finding Dory. You know, maybe honey she should have stayed lost. Starring Ellen DeGeneres and Albert Brooks in this $200 million budget animated movie. Could you imagine how much tuition you could pay off with that? I mean, fish do go to school, right? This movie made $485 million worldwide. Now that is not fish food. I'm not so much one to complain because I am a bit of a slow swimmer. And in fact, I kind of flounder around. This fun little story is the continuance of Finding Nemo, where Dory the forgetful fish remembers where she came from. Now, she sets out to find her mom and dad, leaving Marlin and Nemo behind, and that's about it. She crosses the ocean, she ends up at a fish hospital. Well, when a special walrus comes up to the rock trying to share, I don't know what I want to share the rock. And then, of course, they turn her, 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 to, you know, bark him off and everything, but. That was like the best part for me. I kind of laughed at that, especially since the guy who did the walrus voice did the Hello, my name is Bruce voice. Well, you know, that was probably the most enjoyable part of the movie, other than the cameo voice of Sigourney Weaver, who does the voiceover announcer for the fish hospital. Now, it's kind of like a, oh, look, I remember, through Dory's life as she swims along and looks for her mom and dad and she finds him, she finds new friends, she's Dory, everybody loves her, which proves ignorance is bliss because if you don't know sh you can always swim upstream. Help! Somebody help me! Hey, you. I have to find my family. It's not like I have a map of this place. A map? Good idea. You take me to the map. I figure out where my parents are. Oh, boy. I can help you get to your family. You will? We'll all help you. Bailey, you've got to use your echolocation. Ooh, I feel stupid. Bailey. Sorry. Now, this movie didn't eel as good as the first one, Finding Nemo. It wasn't as funny. It wasn't as genuine. There wasn't really real internal struggle and dialogue going on for as much as a fish with a 30 second memory could do. But that said, you know, if Dory actually has that bad of a memory, how does she remember Marlin and Nemo's names? Hmm. Rent it? Yeah, definitely. Watch it with kids, perfect for the kiddos. Adult time, uh -uh. No, that thing stinks like dead fish. That's bait right there. Mm -mm. Jail bait, maybe. Save it for kids. It is not an adult movie. I did not enjoy it. My son and I said, you know what? We saw the first, we gotta see the second. You don't gotta see it. Trust me, don't get hooked into that one. Now, if you're a fan of the Netflix, you might have heard about Black Mirror. Now, Black Mirror is the dark reflection of technology and humanity. Ah! So this reflects the dark side of technology and human interface. So the stories act like vignettes that tie in together. Great cast, great actors. Watch it if you're into binge watching like I am. It's a great cast, great crew with stories that are vignettes independent of their own, but yet kind of weave a web of what's going on. Kind of like the interweb, right? With the spiders out there. It's important that you realize there is a small medical procedure involved. Sorry for a game? I didn't expect to find myself living in the future, but here I f***ing well am. So you recently logged your first kill? Huh? And how did that feel? They filmed me. Through my computer camera. You ready? If we drill down into the numbers, you have got a solid popularity arc here. No one is this happy. A two year old with a balloon isn't this happy. Singularity. 
society is when computers learn to outsmart man like women did years ago. You are so adorable. We're genuinely empathetic as a species. We don't actually really want to kill each other. Gotcha. This means fun. Or it should. Now, I haven't watched the whole series, but what I have seen of it, I do like. Good acting, good stories, makes you kind of think what's going on. Kind of has that um, Twilight Zone feel where you're, you're, you're kind of hoping, you, you think you know what's going on, but then there's a little twist in there. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, twist, twist and shout. Now, if you're a religious person, you might believe in God, and you might believe that God talks to you, whether through prayers or a burning bush, or maybe sitting in a hospital. Russell Brand comes along in Army of One, opposite Nicolas Cage, who, and he tells Nicolas Cage, I need you to do me a favor. Go kill Osama Bin Laden. Go take one for the team. Now, you might think that this would be a good comedy, good fiction story. This is actually based on real life. I mean, seriously. Nicolas Cage, I like to see him branching out, although he went a little more out in the pants than branching out in acting. But anyway, he channeled a hungover Brent Spinner from Independence Day in this movie. Did he look good? No. Looked like <laughs> And that was probably the goal. So, good job. Good job. Acting, very Nicolas Cage. Was he funny? No. Russell Brand? Definitely. I would say see this movie only for Russell Brand, if nothing else. Russell, he's a comedic genius. Love the man. In the plutonic sense, because, you know, you can't really touch God, unless you're Mary, with a golden shower and you know, Zeus. I must have gone through about a hundred boxes of Kleenex. That is disgusting, but I'll take it! Hello, Gary. God? I've got a favor to ask you, Gary. Yes! You and Osama bin Laden. That's crazy. No, I have a lot to do. I'm planning and training. Ah! Hey, man, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm pretty sure you can't fail the package. Ah! Ah! Your bizarre fantasy that somehow you're James Bond or something. Ah! God damn it! You see that motorcycle? He's going to lead us to Osama bin Laden. Are you serious? Now, the people are real looking in this. They kind of look like couples that came out of the show Grace Under Fire, just just a little too worn around the edges, you know, kind of lost that Hollywood glitz, but it works. It's, it's a good comedy, but I couldn't find any financial statistics on this movie. Now, it cost $40 million to make somewhere in there, but it, nothing on what it earned, which tells me the thing bombed so bad that somebody's prayers were not answered. Now, this movie would definitely take a miracle in order to survive most critics. It ended up with a 5 out of 10 stars on IMDb. Not the best movie and not the worst movie. Definitely worth a watch if you're bored on a Saturday afternoon. But would I own it? Yeah, honey, I, I, I've got bigger things to, to pray for. Kind of like, you know, a husband, because, you know, I'm single. Brett, God? Russell, can you help me out? I hope you enjoyed this short episode 8 of Digital Download. I know I'm a week behind on this, but you know what? You're going to like it anyway. There might get a giggle in here, and if not, then I'll have to act like a walrus again. Oh, 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 oh. Fish, please. Oh, oh, oh. Join us next week right here for Digital Download. If you have any comments, leave them below. Make sure they're nice, because I don't want to have to review you someday and not be very nice myself.